Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So this channel, Every Data Science, is all about trying to learn the different concepts in raw data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, I'm going to solve this question on Strata Scratch regarding finding user purchases both using Python as well as MySQL and try to walk you through how we can develop solutions to such problems. The difficulty level of this question is medium and this question has been asked in Amazon interviews. Okay, let's jump right in. The question reads, write a query that will identify returning active users a returning active user is a user that has made a second purchase within seven days of any other of their purchases. Output a list of user IDs of these returning active users, right? So basically we are given a data frame called Amazon transactions and our expected output is also a pandas data frame, which essentially has only one column, right? Basically the list of all the user IDs that are active, right? And how do we define active? A user that has from one of its purchases within the seven days has made another purchase right so if we look at the data frame right so these are different columns right so if we preview this column right so you have all this uh, information so user id item created at and revenue we need to find out that okay for each of the user ids right a different uh you know things that are bought so whether the two things are bought within the seven day period or not, if they are, then you return that user ID. If not, then you ignore that user ID, right? So to do this, what we need to do is for each of the user IDs, we should order by the created ad, right? So that we know that, okay, this was the first thing that was purchased. This was the second thing, third thing, fourth thing, etc. And then we can calculate the difference between the times, right? And try to see that whether that is within the seven day period or not. So what I'm saying is, so you have a data frame called Amazon transactions, right? So what we can do is we can write Amazon transactions, right? Amazon transactions, and then we can sort by the columns. So sort values by which columns by a list of columns. So we write, okay, so sorted firstly by user ID and then by created at column. Right. Uh, also, like since we need to write Amazon transactions a lot, so let me you know store this in a data frame called DF. Right. So now, if I look at like what is DF, right? So let me run this. Let's see what we are getting. So now, if you look at it, right? So for each of the user ID, we have arranged this in an ascending order. So okay, this was the first product to be bought. This is the second, third, fourth, etc. Right. And then for different user IDs, again, it starts. So now once we have this, then what we can do is for each of the user IDs, right? So we can group by and calculate the difference, right? So what is the difference between these two, these two, these two, right? And if we go ahead and use the dot diff method in pandas, right? So it is going to calculate the difference of this row and from the previous row in seconds. Right. So what I mean by that is we can create another column in this data frame called, let's say next purchase time or something like that. Right. So what we can do is we can create another column. So DF uh, next purchase time or something like that. Right. And how we are calculating it. So basically what we are doing is from this data frame called DF, right. We are grouping by DF dot group by right which column we are grouping by the user id right and user id and once you group by the user id then you calculate the difference in this column right created ad because that is how you are going to get the like right the number of seconds between the current purchase and the previous purchase right so from the column created at right from the column created at calculate the difference using dot diff and this will return the difference in number of seconds right so let me you know write df and let's see what we are getting so if you look at it right so here you have next purchase time is null why because as i said so this dot diff method calculates the difference of the current value with the previous value since there is nothing before this so we have null here but here now if you see the difference between you know 13th of march 2020 and 7th of march 2020 is these many seconds similarly for this this is uh, so this is the difference between these two right this is the difference between these two right and now since the user has changed so again there is nothing before this so here we have null and the list goes on right so once we have this so right now we have the difference between you know two purchases in seconds then what we can do is we can apply boolean indexing right so we can make sure that okay whenever your this next purchase time is less than the number of seconds in seven days 
right so which is basically 24 hours into 60 minutes into 60 seconds multiplied by 7 so those are going to be the number of seconds in 7 days so if this is less than that then you keep the user id if not then you ignore that user id right so that is what we are going to do that okay df and then df of column next purchase right next purchase time is less than or equal to and then how do we calculate the number of seconds in seven days so we can use the pandas dot time delta right pandas dot time delta and we can provide okay days is equal to seven right so uh, you know if i just you know run this let me you know just instead of doing all this let me copy this here right let me paste it here uh, and let me you know remove this for for a bit uh, let me run this. So if you look at it, right, so six six hundred four thousand eight hundred, right. So if you multiply twenty four by sixty by sixty and seven, you will going to get this these many seconds. So these many seconds are there in the seven days, right. So that is what we are doing is that you know next purchase time in seconds, right, is less than these number of seconds. Then then you know it will return a true value. Otherwise, it will return a false value. And these list of true false values will be uh, acting as a filter. And that is what we call a boolean indexing right so let me remove this so this are these is only going to keep all the rows where the boolean indexing return basically true values right so if i run this right so if you like add it it will only going to keep those rows where that was true right so once we have that right once we have that we only need to return what in the output we only need the user ids right so once we have this data frame then we can only keep one column from it so we can write you know user id and also if you look at it right so there are two rows or there can be duplicate rows for a particular uh, user id right so it is possible that one user id right bought similar stuff within the seven days period right so that is why there is repetition but in the output we don't need the repetition so how to get rid of that we can use dot unique method right so here if i write dot unique right and now let me run this okay so if you look at it now our output is same as what we expect right so let me go ahead and submit it to save it passes all the test cases so yeah, everything is green and this is how i do it so yeah, this is how the solution looks like in python now let's switch back to my sequel and see how the solution will look like right so if you look at it, same question right we are given a table called amazon transactions expected output is same as well right and if we you know inquire this table amazon transaction it is it has the same values right all the same columns and same values so here also what we need to do is the first thing that we did in python was you know we need to order this by user id and created ad to find out okay what is the next purchase right so here what we can do is we can use a window function so from this table called amazon transactions we can keep all the columns and then let's create another column which is basically going to have okay this is the next purchase so this was the initial purchase what came after this then what came after that right and then calculate the difference between these two times right so what we can do is we can use the lead window function and lead that is the next value from the created at column and since this is a window function we write over clause and then for each of the user we need that right so we partition by user id right and then order by created at in ascending order right and we can alias this again as next purchase right so uh, let me go ahead and run this let's see what we are getting right so if you look at it right so you have okay so the user id 100 the first thing uh, the person bought was bread then banana then banana and these are their times right or dates right so if you look at it so this was the first purchase then after this the next purchase was this right basically, basically this one so uh, this after the next purchase was this similarly this right so once you have this then what we can do is we can basically calculate the difference between these two and try to see whether the number of days between this is less than equal to seven or not because that is what we are concerned with right that is how we define active returning users right so what we can do is we can save this in a common table expression so with cte as and then this entire thing goes into parentheses right and then what we can do is from this common table expression we are only going to keep those rows where the difference of these two columns is less than or equal to seven right so how we can calculate the number of days between two date times 
right we can use date dip function right and which all columns so next purchase right next purchase and created at columns right it should be less than equal to seven because that is what we are defining returning active user as and once you keep only those rows then you just return distinct user ids and if you look at the output the alias is user id right so we write as user id okay so this looks good let me go ahead and run this to see what happens so yeah if you look at it our output is same as expected output let me go ahead and submit it to see if it passes all the test cases so yeah, everything is green and this is how we do it again not a very difficult question all we had to do was you know for each of the transaction we tried to find out where when was the next purchase and then calculated the difference uh in python we calculated the difference directly using dot dip method which returned the difference in seconds in mysql we do, did the same thing but instead of seconds we just did directly by days right and once we had that then you know we just returned the distinct user ids so this is how we do it let me know if there is a better way or a more efficient way to solve this question let the solution be in the comment section below and until then i will see you guys in the next video